I'm Doug from Frag Farm, and I thought I'd put together a video uh, about the bolus effect and what we see in the farm, and why we think this is the best dosing method available in the reefing hobby today. I developed this method with Claude Schumacher at Fauna Marine over about two years, where we decided to look at the advantages and disadvantages of every method of dosing a reef tank. We think the bolus method is the ultimate method that reduces the amount of precipitation, maximizes the pH, gives you the best growth and the best color and health in your corals. And we've designed it that way. If you need more information about bolus, visit the faunamarine.de website Go to the support page and you can download the how to use guide for Bolus, which is uh, quite an extensive uh, document that explains how to set it up um, and the essence of how it works. For users of Fauna Marine Balling Light, it's a very easy transition. But uh, for others that have used a carbonate high pH dosing system or hydroxides, um, the adjustment to bolus can take a little while longer, um, up to sort of 45, 60 days to, uh, to correct everything so that it works as, as we would expect. So let's have a look at some of the details and dive into some of the data of what we see in the farm. This is some real data taken from the farm. Uh, directly from the Profilux that runs uh, our main systems. Here we have a pH measurement in green and the uh, alkalinity coming from the KH director in grey. By placing both metrics on the same graph we're able to get a really good overview of what is happening over a 24-hour period. At the very beginning the, the growth in alkalinity and pH happening together but then the characteristically flat alkalinity that we see with bolus for six, seven, eight, nine hours throughout the photo period uh, where it just unwavering and doesn't change. We'll dive into each of these aspects in turn. So the first phase is the bolus dose. In the farm this happens at 8.45 before the lights come on. We'll come to the lights in a moment. And the purpose of the bolus dose is really to give the entire uh, daily alkalinity requirement in one hit into the tank. The effect of this is to raise the pH uh, quite dramatically in a fairly short space of time just before the lights come on. The systems are quite large. Um, it's 1800 litres, 15 feet uh, of trays. And it takes a little while for the, um, for the bolus to, to work its way around the system. But we can see it going from 8.05 to 8.07 to 8.14 uh, just before the lights come on. This early pH gain is quite important because getting the pH to natural seawater levels enables all of the processes within the corals to work more effectively at the time that the lights come on and the coral starts to get very photoactive. This makes the photosynthesis more efficient and the calcification uh, start much faster which means that the coral is growing for a greater length of time during the photo period. At 8.45 each morning the uh, GHL doses come to life and they start to dose the bolus it's important to ensure that the peristaltic tubes are in good condition. Um, obviously it puts a lot of strain on them. Here is a live view of the pH going up during the bolus on a time lapse. You can see the lights are off until 9.10, uh, but you can see the pH going up quite substantially uh, before then. Then you get the sea of blue when the lights come on. pH has gone up quite substantially and that's it set for the day. Here's the profile for the Red Sea 160s that we have in the farm 
a very, very minimal ramp up time. Uh, lights are on at 9.10. Uh, by about 9.15, they're working pretty much full power. Um, we have blues on at 100%, 80% whites uh, for several hours. And then over a period of uh, an hour or so, it, it ramps back down a little bit of white and then it goes to blues for the rest of the day. So looking at the pH graph over the photo period, we can see three distinct phases. The first one being the bolus, where we've dosed. That's raised the pH up, getting all the processes uh, excited and uh, ready to work. Phase two we call solus. This is where we have uh, a higher intensity of light, um, really to drive the maximum amount of energy production within the corals, really to energize the sugar production ready for the next phase which is about growth and calcification. One of the most common questions that we are asked is surely that extra light is going to burn my corals? Well actually no because with the bolus we're putting in uh, a large amount of halogens with that alkalinity dose and the fluoride, the iodine, the bromine all act as protective agents uh, against the additional light. Um, so those will protect your corals and actually enable the photosynthesis to happen more efficiently. Looking at the alkalinity graph, there is a few things uh, to note here. The first is that the uh, time it takes for the alkalinity to actually reach its, its peak. In this case, it can take a couple of hours uh, to reach the high point um, where it will stay for the rest of the day. These measurements are done with a GHL KH director and it's set to perform a test every hour on the hour over a 24 hour period. So this is quite a lot of data on alkalinity. As we can see on the graph, the pre-bolus alkalinity is 7.6 dKH. In this case, the bolus was 640 millilitres, which equates to about 1.8 dKH of increase in alkalinity. As we can see, the uh, post-bolus alkalinity is 7.9 and reaches a total of 8 dKH after two hours. This means that there's only a 0.4 dKH increase despite the fact we've dosed 1.8 dKH all in one go. Here we have some of the magic of the bolus effect. So the question is where has that alkalinity gone? Well the fact is that it's been stored up and it's not visible as alkalinity, it's not been fully processed. And it's one of the unique features of bicarbonate as opposed to carbonate. As the bicarbonate is used by the corals and other processes in the tank, the stored up uh, bicarbonate that's in the carbonic battery releases a little bit more and it self-regulates and it keeps the alkalinity perfectly flat if dosed correctly. The total amount of alkalinity that you dosed with the bolus will appear by the end of the 24 hour cycle. So nothing is lost or gained as such. It's just delayed. The effect this has on the corals is remarkable as we tend to find that LPS become more puffy SPS tend to have better polyp extension and better color and the corals actually show an increased amount of aggression. Uh, you see better color in the basal discs of Acropora and uh, generally a thicker plumper tissue as a result. Measuring alkalinity becomes a little more of a challenge with the bolus method. Uh, it's important to measure the alkalinity at the end of the photo period when the pH is highest and uh, most of the carbonic, uh, carbonic battery has been depleted so all the alkalinity will be visible at that point. 
you basically want to ensure that the alkalinity remains constant from one day to the next at the same time each day. So I would measure the alkalinity in the evening and uh, just ensure that if it's 8 dKH, um, that the next day at the same time it's 8 dKH. That means you've got your bolus dose correct. So back to this graph and we can summarize. Uh, the bolus really gives us the boost in pH, a really flat and stable alkalinity. For those who've struggled to try and raise their pH, it's the perfect solution. Um, it's important that you don't use any other high pH uh, methods with this, um, such as CO2 scrubbers or um, certainly no carbonate or hydroxide dosing with it or it will completely ruin the bolus. Um, the instructions need to be followed pretty precisely as well. Um, the dose timing is very important and uh, no you can't have multiple doses throughout the day. It works with one hit um, or you lose all of the characteristics of the, um, of the whole method. In this example, uh, the pH is a little depressed um, because we're using carbon dosing um, and we're also feeding extremely heavily in these tanks. Um, you can see the dip in the pH um, at about four o'clock there. Well, that was uh, quite a large dose of um, Mines and uh, Coral Sprint, which um, you know, is really going to create a large amount of bacterial activity, which will drop the pH. What you can see is the resilience of how quickly it, it bounces back. Um, and it's nearly as though it, it goes back on track. Um, this system, if you're not feeding excessively, um, you will achieve a pH of 8.2 to 8.4 quite easily. Um, as long as the room is reasonably well ventilated. Um, and there's not massive amounts of CO2 in the building or in the room. Um, quite often we have uh, customers who are going well above 8.4 um, and we have to put some tactics in place to uh, reduce the pH. In that case, you just reduce the amount of solace. So just reduce the intensity of the light, which will give you um, a lower pH uh, boost. I hope you find this interesting and uh, useful if you're starting on your bolus journey. Um, it's a great method and uh, encourage everyone to, to, to give it a go. Um, please use balling light. It's the best uh, system for it. Um, and any issues, please contact support at Fauna Marine um, through the web page or through uh, the Facebook uh, group which is very good. We also have uh, Reef Power UK is the Fauna users group on Facebook um, which is useful for the English speaking world. Um, but good luck with your bolus endeavours and uh, feedback to us if you can. It's always nice to hear when things are going well. And thanks for watching.